Good morning. Thank you for that beautiful music. Aren't we so blessed to be gifted with some musicians in our midst? Thank you. Thank you so much. A um, couple of announcements for you who may not know me. I am Pastor Marge Neal, and it's my pleasure to be able to serve here at uh, Lutheran Church of the Resurrection during your time of transition. And uh, we have a special guest today, Pastor Berger. He will be speaking later and, and preaching for us today about food for the poor. So I am looking forward to hearing what he has to say. And I'm trying to think, uh, the one announcement I wanted to talk about was someone asked me an interesting question last week uh, from the second service. They wondered why that we had uh, a confession at the first service, but the second service doesn't have a confession. And I thought that was an excellent question. See, uh, confession isn't required. If you look in your uh, LBW and the ELW, the red book in front of you on page 94, it says that you may uh, do confession. It's not something that you have to do, but we do it in remembrance of our baptism. And Luther, he thought confession was so important that he would have made it a third sacrament, uh, but he was afraid that it might be abused, like it was, so that we kept it, that you can do private confession. Did you know that you had that opportunity to do that? If you look in your book on page 243, you make an appointment with the pastor and you can have individual private confession, believe that or not. I, I think for us to remember that we have been forgiven over 2,000 years ago from Jesus Christ hanging on the cross, that we don't have to be forgiven every week. But guess what? We're human, and we forget, and we need to be reminded, I think, on a weekly and even daily basis. You are forgiven. You are a beloved child of God. And I think we, the more we can hear that, the better. So just wanted you to know that that is uh, something that we do offer in the Lutheran Church. Are there other announcements we need to make for the good of the family? I guess we're ready to get started. And guess what? We're going to start with confession. <laughs> you may stand or kneel as you are able. And we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, we confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained to minister the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please stand if you're able, and we'll sing together just a closer walk with thee. Hymn number 697, 697.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. God of the covenant, in our baptism you call us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us the courage you gave the apostles that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading comes from Ephesians, the first chapter, 3 through 14. In Jesus, all of God's plans and purposes have been made known as heaven and earth are united in Christ. Through Jesus, we have been chosen as God's children and have been promised eternal salvation. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoration as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasures of his will to be praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestows on us in givenness of our trespass according to the riches of his grace that he lavishes on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ. As a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained his inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who are the first to set hope, our hope in Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him for you also, when you have heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promise of the Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please join me repeating responsibly Psalms, Psalms 85. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely the salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet, graciousness and peace will kiss each other. The faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield his increase. For Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard it, 
He said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guest, and the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And then solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, and yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guest, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When the disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you very much. It's good to see you. My name is Bob Berger. I'm representing Food for the Poor today, and I thank you very much for the invitation. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, it is in you that we live, we move, and we have our being always. Your power, your presence, come to be a part of us. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for that privilege, the privilege that you have said we are so vital and so important to you that we become your body, your presence, your emissaries here, now, and forever. Help us to always be trustworthy in this. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Amen. It is a delight to be here. I actually am, I live in Orange City, Central Florida, right outside of Deland. And I kind of have a, I've been working with Food for the Poor since 2011. But about three years ago, the little church that is in Deland, Faith Lutheran Church, asked if I might help them on a, an interim basis. So we have a little of that. And uh, so I made uh, an agreement with them, and it worked out for the Synod and for them and for me, that I get to go out now one Sunday out of a month uh, to share with Food for the Poor, and then I stay at home three. So uh, this is my chance to be out. But I've got to say to you, during the pandemic, um, it really became quite uh, pr difficult. I've only been out once at that point, so this is my second time through. So I might be dusting off a little rust on this kind of thing. Uh, and I understand you all had your services out in the, uh, outside for an awful long time, so did we. We had a transmitter, and you were first in your heart, but number 88.7 on your radio dial, you know. And uh, so we we're just kind of getting back in and getting used to things and, and working with that. And there's always that, that change. So I guess when saying to you, I understand a little bit where you're coming from now. And I know uh, the Bergstresser family as well, honestly, to be very frank. Uh, her, uh, your, your former pastor's uncle was a part of the congregation in Orange City where I was and very neat people. So obviously, I think there's got to be a lot of grief that goes along with that. It, that family is very, very powerful. So um, I, I know that, and I understand that. And I think that when you're coming into the situation where you are, you're in a transition. What's going to happen? What's God got in mind for you? How do you go about that? And I went on your line and looked around, and I'm not very good, but even a blind uh, squirrel finds an acorn once in a while. 
and I saw some of the challenges that you have, and, and I listened to uh, Mr. Bond. You know, I would be very tempted. I've, I've got honesty. I would introduce myself as Bond, William Bond. You know, I just couldn't resist doing that, Bill. But anyway, uh, and I listened to the challenges that you have economically and listened to the challenges of how you're going to put things together. And I... Some comparisons there. I, I think at a time like this, in a time like this, you really got to go straight back to the basics. Who are we? Who are all those people out there? What's our relationship to them? And for me, if you'll permit me a bit, you all have made some things available to me. There's that marvelous moment in all of our lives. Now, two we. Two weeks ago, I had a little seven-year-old who was baptized. I hadn't had that for a while. Seven-year-olds, five-year-olds, six, they're marvelous people. You know, just get one of them, sit down, give them an ice cream cone, talk to them for a while. The world looks so much different. But think about this. It all begins when someone puts water on the head, name of the Father and of the Son. of the Holy Spirit. And then someone comes to you, may I borrow your head? And they mark you and they say, you are marked with the sign of the cross and sealed with the life of the Christ forever. Forever. That's a powerful moment. Baptismal service also there comes that moment when you take a candle and if your vision's better than mine maybe you have to work out a little bit but that's sort of emblematic what's going on too Think about this. Those words from Matthew. And it's a script for our lives. If you really want to think about it, it is a small, powerful script. Let your light so shine before others that they give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Another very powerful part of this the candle, the candle, it can only give its light by giving itself away. That's what we are. It is in the Christ that we live, we move, we have our being. And as we are the light, then the world sees the Father's love through us. And that's very important on several levels, as far as I'm concerned. Let me extinguish this. I travel a lot of different places. In the years that I was going across, it was, a, it was in uh, Philadelphia, and St. James Lutheran Church, and they had this as part of their beginning of their worship, and I've appropriated it. That's a much nicer word than steal, isn't it? I've appropriated that for food for the poor these days. And it says, and I'll, I'll resurrection Lutheran, where everyone is someone, and Jesus is Lord. Where everyone is someone, and Jesus is Lord. Think about that. That dual call. As you are here as a community of faith, you are a community that cares about each other. Two great pillars that I think the church rests on. The great commandment and the great commission. The great commandment, love one another. And the more important part of that statement is, as I have loved you. Think about that. 
Jesus is saying that before he goes to the cross. Greater love has no one to lay down his life for his friends. Jesus lays it down on the cross. When we are called to give ourselves, we lay it down our lives with our time, with our precious. You know, we don't have the 10 minutes ago we had. You lay down that time. Give up your life for your friends. And there are even the, the possessions that we have that are given to us that we dare even call our own. They are given to us in the trust. How do we use that? So we are Resurrection Lutheran Church where everyone is someone and Jesus is Lord. And then Jesus as Lord calls us to be loving for the other. The other part of that pillar, first is the Great Commandment, the Great Commission, is go into all the world and make disciples. And actually it is, I believe, in your going, how you go about it, that people are drawn to you that the discipling is done. Disciple is just a fancy word for discipline of following God. That's all it is. We are the disciples as we follow because Jesus is Lord. And I know you have challenges for putting together budgets and all of those kind of things. My God, I've been doing that more than since God was a boy. Anyway, with churches, right. But how do we balance the call that the Christ says to us and the needs that we see in and around us. And that's why I'm here with Food for the Poor. I listen to your videos. I know what you've got to do. I know how the call committees have to go and what the finances are for that kind of thing. But I'm going to ask you this. I'm going to ask you to consider something. Jesus calls us to care for the most vulnerable the most vulnerable, those whose lives are in danger. I think of this gospel lesson for today. This is, you know, supposed to be good news. That's a tough one. You know, it really is. A decapitation of John laying down his life. But I think what it says to us is violence does great destruction. And what's the old statement that says, when the elephants fight, it's the grass that dies? I come to you to invite you to an adventure of caring for people who live not only just about 90 miles off our shore, but it'd be a whole different world, the people of Haiti, and the violence that is destroying that nation. There are a lot of people who will come to you and offer you an opportunity to help, and I, I applaud every one of them. I want to tell you why I choose to go through Food for the Poor for this particular reason. Since 1982, Food for the Poor has been involved in Haiti. We know things. We have 400 people who are on our payroll who are there, driving trucks, keeping centers. We are the largest nonprofit group, NGO, to feed people there, to build houses. Food for the Poor, because God has blessed us, has become one of the largest of all uh, inter really relief and development organizations that are housed here in the United States. And it's, it's, uh, that's who we are. And that's what we're about. And uh, again, Haiti is one of those places where we are. Jamaica has 17 countries around the Caribbean. On your way in, if all worked well, you got a brochure and you've got an envelope and all of that good thing. So it's in there, probably said better than I'm saying it to you now, but I'm, I'm here to share it. And what we have also, I'm going to tell you about current events that have been going on. It was a couple of days ago, really when Elsa blew in, my mom used to say it's no wind that blows no good, the, on the streets of Haiti were the ga gangs, <clears throat> and we couldn't get through <clears throat> with food trucks going south. We could go north. We could take care of things in the north. And when I said relief and development, you know, give a man a fish, eats for a day, teach him how to fish, he eats for a lifetime, we do both of those things. You've got to keep people alive, and particularly right now, it's critical. We had a cargo, and we were trying to get it through. We had 12 semi-trucks, 40 feet long, 
full of rice and beans and all of those things trying to get south. We were, had our, a couple of our trucks in the first part were shot up. They had to turn. When Elsa blew in, the gangs got off the streets, went out at one in the morning and sent the convey through. And they got through. Thank you, Jesus. And lives were sent. So when you are able to give and care through food for the poor, we have a history of combating the violence and getting to where we need to go. Development. We teach people <clears throat> how to sow. There are fishing villages. Marvelous kinds of things. When this breaks, you know, tough times don't laugh, t last. Tough people do. And that's what we're trying to do. Hold the fort right now. And even in the midst of all of this difficulty, we have been able to build 100 homes or up in the north area. And when a child, <clears throat> when a family comes into our homes, their child is automatically enrolled in one of our schools. Schools are not free <clears throat> in any other part of the world. Well, at least the part of the world we serve in, which is 17 countries around the Caribbean. Food for the Poor just stays in that area. We don't go to Africa. We don't do other things. I support Lutheran World Relief, <coughs> excuse me, very much because that's global. But food for the poor is right on our neighbors, right here. I think of that story, you know, about Dives and, and Lazarus is the, the, the beggar at the gate. It's right here. They're our neighbors. And when we're able to go there, build a home, about $4,800, we can build a good home. We really can. And it's a home, I, and I have been in the homes, it's, it's solid. It's solid. It's concrete block. And we used to be able to withstand 20, uh, really about the standard was uh, for winds when they blew in. I think it was, uh, what was the standard that's normal around here now? I've forgotten. I'm sorry. I, I've forgotten that number, but we increased it by twice so the roofs would not go, so the strapping systems, so we'd not lose the roofing. And we've been able to do very, very well with that through the blows that have come through. We can do that. Your gift, if you choose to do that and make the sacrifice, I'm going to tell you it will change lives. We can feed people for 10 cents a meal. It's beans, it's rice, it's a little more protein, usually chicken. Beef, no, <laughs> that's too expensive. We can't do that. 10 cents a meal. You really can push back the gates of death for people who are so very vulnerable. I invite you to that. You have that envelope that's there. I'm here, you can tell. I'm just, I'll be at the back door. You know, you can see right away I'm kind of a shy guy, right? I'll be the one in the white robe lying across there, and you step over me to get out. No pressure. <laughs> Honestly, though, you can really make a difference. At 10 cents a meal, help them get by these difficult times and save lives. I'll tell you a story. It's been a few years back. I haven't been to Haiti in about five years, to be very frank. But we were going and we were building these homes. And there were tracks. And we're coming along and we've got half of Haiti on our feet, stomping around. So we're not going through any homes that are inhabited, but we're going through some of the new ones that are going up. We came across and there was this little boy. He had to be about 10 years old. And he was dressed in his uniform for going to school. And he was very proud of that. He's standing on the porch. He has this little kitten in his arm. He just wanted to care for this kitten. It drew some compassion from him. And when he was there, he beckoned to us to come. Now, we've got 12 of us. We're running around. We want to go. And his mother, come, come, come. And she's got her broom, she's gonna, but she wanted to show us everything. He wanted to show me his books that he had on his shelf. He, the books. His life was going to be different. 
because he was able to go to school and be there. That's how you change lives. That's what the development is all about. It's an opportunity. If you can take it, your life will change and you'll change other people's lives. Your lives will be linked with some people in the book of life that you may never meet until you get into eternity. But they'll be linked. You'll be linked forever. It's an adventure. It's a commitment. It's a sharing. It's a giving of self. But isn't that what we really are all about anyway? Last thing I want to do with you. Use your Christian imagination. Can you help me? Close your eyes. You won't have to go too far. Don't go to sleep, please. See out in front of you. Fields of people just sitting on the ground eating. See them taking the food to themselves. And every so often they just nod and look at you. And then your eyes go to the center of the crowd. And there you see slowly someone start to stand up. Pushes a hood back from his head. Your eyes meet his eyes and you know immediately who it is. And he looks into your eyes, into your heart, into your soul. He says, come. Come. He says your name. Come to the kingdom prepared for you before the beginning of time. Because when I was hungry, and his hand moves across, when I was hungry, it was you who gave me food. And all God's people said together, Amen.
the words of the Apostles' Creed, the words in which we were baptized. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. Holy Parent, you welcome your people into one family and gather all things to yourself. Bestow your grace upon your beloved church, lavish your wisdom upon us, and redeem us from our faults, that by our witness all might praise your glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Awesome creator, you steadfastly tend to the smallest of seeds and the mightiest of sycamore trees. Spring up green growth from the earth, nourish the growth of fruit, grain, and other crops, and bless the work of the farmers and laborers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the oppressed, turn the ears of those who are in power to the voices of prophets in our own day. Protect those who speak difficult truths when it is risky to do so. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of strength, you are near to those who endure difficulty. Comfort all who are survivors of violence. Guard the refugee and the immigrant and protect all those who are victims of prejudice and discrimination. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of love, we pray for this holy house and for all who worship here. We pray especially for those whose efforts behind the scenes often go unnoticed. For the people who care for our grounds, our office staff, for all of our volunteers. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, for those among us who are sick, that need your healing touch. We pray especially for the Green family the Rathbun family, for Kelly Jackson, the Fickthorn family, Galen Leintz, Sandra and Bob Whittle, Jeannie Holland, John Seibel, J.C. Carranza, for Michael and Alex, Linda, and the family of Gloria Leimeyer, and for those whom we now name aloud, and in the silence of our hearts. Surround them with your love, your healing touch, and may we be given those words to speak to our families, to our friends, to our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We thank you, God, for the saints, the martyrs, and prophets who have died in the faith. We remember those in this community who have recently died. United with them as God's children, assure us that we are yours forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. <coughs> also with you. You may be seated. Thank you for joining us for our virtual version of our service. In the live in-person version, we're currently collecting the tithes and offerings and connect cards. You can fill out a digital connect card by going to goresurrection.com slash contact. Let us know that you're here, any prayer requests that you may have, or any needs that you have at this time. We're also collecting the tithes and offerings. There's digital ways that you can participate in the ministries of the church. One is goresurrection.com slash give. The other is texting 77977 these letters, L-C-O-T-R-C-B. You can also give by dropping a check in the mail to 525 Minuteman Causeway in Cocoa Beach, Florida. 
Let's return now to the service as it continues. Let us pray. <clears throat> blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, our possessions. Use us in what we have gathered in the feeding of the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, and at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, <coughs> Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choir of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. Gave it to all, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now may we be so bold to pray in those words that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come now, taste and see that the Lord is good.
the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Let us sing together, Thou Font, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing, hymn number 807, 807.